Okay, everybody, um, excuse the mess here. I'm in my garage, but um, I was putting together some stuff that I found to test out a, a particular item that I uh, acquired recently. And you can get fairly cheap on eBay if you, uh, you know, are patient. Um, what you're looking at here is the output of an Apple II computer after it ran, you know, like a Hello World type program for a while. What you will notice is that it's running on a ProView VGA monitor. This is a 17 inch VGA monitor. And it's pretty clear too, a really nice clear image. I don't know how this video is chopping it up, if it's chopping it up at all, but it, it is actually pretty clear. And never mind the noises that you hear in the background, that's just my neighbor and his hot rod and people mowing the lawn. Anyway, um, what I had this hooked up to, and like I said, pardon the mess please, um, is, I actually found an Apple II computer that's perfectly filthy um, with a couple disk two drives that I have yet to test but I have the composite output going through a cable through a whole mess of other stuff to a device called an Xtron system 75 or 7SC 7 Sierra Charlie this is a pretty neat device. It's actually a video scaler. Uh, it has multiple inputs. It has all different types of RGB inputs, including 15 kilohertz RGB inputs, which I'm going to test with an Amiga sometime. But this is the first time I actually hooked this thing up. Um, to give you an idea of what's going on. I, it, it has been pre-configured for uh, certain inputs and stuff. Yeah, you can actually put a computer input in here, a VGA computer input, and it will scale it to another format. And I'll show you here by going through the menu some of the things that you can do, like uh, switcher setup and configuration. It has a scalar rate, and with this you can change the uh, frequency. Uh, now my monitor is doing weird things as I change this frequency, and you can also change. Uh, let's see, how am I doing this? I'm doing this without instructions right now, just to let you know. I'm going to pump it up to 75 hertz, and uh, it actually still looks good on the on the monitor so I'm gonna leave it at 75 Hertz um, I'll hit next and then you can change the sync uh, RGB horizontal vertical or to RG SB which I think that's sync on green uh, so this could actually probably hook up to a spark station monitor uh, with the right connectors um, now it just defaulted something here uh, let's see I can hear menu I want to get it off of RGB RGSB so uh, RGB S that's um, actually working also and then there's RGB HV uh, hey it works I, I'm not going to try to explain it you can even change the polarity of the horizontal and vertical to double plus which seems to work on this monitor uh, horizontal plus vertical minus horizontal minus vertical plus and minus on both and believe it or not they they both work on this so I'm just going to do double plus uh, you can actually even delay the signal, I believe. Uh, I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, you can even make it blue and output. It'll actually change everything to, to shades of blue, like a, uh, uh, like a uh, television studio uh, mo monitor in test mode. Um, keeps popping out of the menu here. Uh, let's see. Edge smoothing. You can actually do edge smoothing, but it, you noticed before it looks pretty clean. And auto select number seven. Input number seven is the video... S video with audio and computer input so I think that just means that if you plug something in it automatically switches to input 7 uh, but that's fine um, other things I can do here uh, audio video adjustments I can change well audio levels on you know coming in I can change uh, blank input uh, let's see I'm turning this now it's not doing anything on the screen I'll show you later how certain things look image size let's do this I'm going to back out here and I'm going to roll the image size from 7 that it defaults to and you can see what happens uh, when I go, oops, it switches out of that menu pretty quick. Um, image size, I'm going to change horizontal vertical. See how it's actually squaring up? It's making the image bigger. And I can make it bigger or smaller. And that's a neat thing for an Apple because everybody knows Apple screens tend to never fill the monitor that they're hooked up to, especially if it's a non-Apple 
composite monitor. Uh, back to the menu again. Um, image size. And I can change the size individually, horizontal and vertical, by rolling knobs here. So rolling, well, okay, this is the biggest it's gonna get. And I think the knobs are actually breaking off. I gotta be careful here. They, they started to like bust out from under. Um, what else can I do here? Input seven video config. Um, and systems information. There's not a whole lot I can do. Um, but I can also, you see these knobs are coming off. See that? It just broke on me, but I can still roll it. Horizontal shift. If I uh, do this, it'll, it'll move the image left and right on the screen. So there's some things I can play around with here. First thing I gotta play around with is, uh, I think get a small screwdriver to put this back on. But as you can see, it is a darn good clean signal. The flicker that, that you see right now is due to me changing it to 75 Hertz, but it's extremely clear, very clear. The only problem is, since this is an Apple, I don't know what the scaler does to the uh, composite tricks that are built in to get the different colors from an Apple. I do have a piece of Apple software here um, that I'm hesitant to put in these disk drives right now because they probably need a good cleaning. Um, I have the game called Sneakers. Um, and I, I forget how to change color on an Apple. It's, it's been quite a while since I used one, but this is the Extron System 7SC. Hey, it works great for this Apple. It's got to work really good for other 8-bit computers that have composite out. I'm looking forward to seeing what this will do with a Commodore, an Apple, TI-99, or for that matter, hooking up the Extron to my 60-inch TV, um, you know, flat-screen TV, and seeing how clean a signal I can get out of these systems from there, because the output's not only VGA, but it will also do um, analog um, HD with the uh, you know the multi-cable HD that's analog mode, uh, and most TVs still support that. Uh, what th then most TVs have a VGA input too, so you can still do that too. But really clean signal. I like this thing. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I saved it from the dumpster. Um, I'm going to have fun with it. I think this will be a centerpiece in my vintage computer setup. This one item, seven different configurable inputs. Uh, only one of them, well, I, actually all of them are configurable, I believe, for a video. But only seven has the natural video inputs. You'd actually have to do some special wiring otherwise on the back. Back is all full BNC jacks. Um, but there you go. Uh, like I said... These things are available, or similar models are available on eBay. I've seen them, 30 to 40 bucks. Uh, I don't know what their operating condition is, but here's one in action, and now you know. It, uh, it works well. Thank you.